This week on In the Studio, I want to talk about some techniques for working with my skiving knives. This is the style of skiving knife that I use and recommend, and I want to go over some tips on using it correctly. When you're skiving, the correct angle for the knife in relationship to the edge of the leather is not quite parallel, but it's closer to parallel than completely perpendicular. Just recently, I had a student and she was always trying to skive like, like this, with the knife edge completely perpendicular to the leather edge. And there was one day when I, I saw her doing this and I turned the leather so it would be the right angle and she twisted around and I turned it so it would be the right angle and she twisted around and I practically tied her in a knot trying to get her to use the correct angle. You can see how when I try to skive like this, it's very difficult and I'm, it would be so easy to just chunk out pieces of leather because the knife angle is wrong. Instead, I'm going to try turning it like this and see how smoothly I can just shave off that edge. You want the angle of the knife to be like that as you skive. Just almost parallel with the edge of the leather. The more you turn like this, the harder it gets to skive. And so you're going to think that you're not a good skiver or your knife isn't sharp. Or your leather is wrong or something. And it's the very same if you're choosing to push skive. If you're pushing away from you, it's the same thing. My knife is turned into the edge of the leather. If I try push skiving like this, I'm going to end up chunking out pieces of leather. And I'm a good skiver, but I still could not skive accurately like that. It's just too hard. You need to turn your knife and your leather edge to where you can slice it off at an angle like that. As you're skiving, always make sure that you can see the very tip of your knife out the edge of the leather. If you lose the tip of your knife, then you might be skiving, but you won't be getting it completely cut off. So see how I've got my skive cut off here? But now I didn't get it, and even though I can peel it off, there's still an unskived edge there. So keep it to where you can see just the tip of your knife as you skive. I'm going to show you one more tip just for efficiency. In many situations like this when you're doing fine intricate inlay and overlay you're going to be both push skiving and pull skiving. There are situations where you have to push skive off of this point. You couldn't pull skive off of this point because it would wrinkle up. You have to push skive off of the point here and then I'm going to have to pull skive off of it from this side. I can't push skive off of that point. So just as a matter of efficiency, what I do in a situation like this is I go around the whole piece and do all of my push skiving. And now I'm going to come back and finish up with all of my pull skiving. And that's just a little tip for being efficient because that way I'm not going push skive, pull skive, push skive, pull skive push skive, pull skive, all the way around turning my knife over and over and over and over and turning the piece around. It's just super easy to do all your push skiving and then all of your pull skiving. In December I entered a competition in Las Vegas called Art of the Cowboy Makers featuring all types of cowboy gear. I entered in the boot making category, of course. 
These are the boots I entered in the Art of the Cowboy Makers competition. They won first place and my prize was this great buckle. I'm really proud of my first place buckle, but it seems to be changing my personality. Every time I wear it, I want to say things like, little lady, and yeehaw! Every year in October, I go to an event in Texas called the Boot and Saddle Makers Roundup. It used to be held in Brownwood, many, many years ago, back when I looked like this. One year at one of those early roundups, I bought a pair of leather scissors. And these leather scissors have been my constant companion for over 15 years. I have loved them. They're really good for cutting heavy leather and they have a spring in them so that they will spring back open after you've cut something heavy. They're made in Germany and they're obviously high quality because I've had them for many years. The two things that I use them for most is cutting the notches in the counter when I'm getting ready to wipe in the heel. And they're also great for getting into areas that I can't quite reach with my five in one. Here's an example. I've drawn some counters on this heavy sole bend and now I'm going to cut them out on my five in one. I like to position things in a strip when I'm cutting on the five in one by myself because it's easier to cut things in a strip. But now I have a problem. My counter is too wide for me to be able to cut it this way. The arm of my five in one is not long enough. So I can either cut that with a knife, or I can cut it with my handy dandy leather scissors. And this is how I use my leather cutting scissors for areas that's hard to get into with the five in one. I suppose you could even use these if you don't have a 5-in-1, but really it's better to have a 5-in-1 too. As I said, I've had these scissors for years and every time I have students in my shop, they want to know how they can get a pair of these scissors also. Well, the good news is I recently was able to track down the maker of these scissors and become a dealer and now I have these available on my website. I'm really happy to be able to offer them because they are an invaluable tool in my shop and I think you'll find you like them also.